Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us today. We are broadcasting live inside Children's Carolyn Scott Rainbow House, and this is our hospitality house for families of patients who live more than 60 miles away from Omaha. And this is an incredibly special place that has literally served tens of thousands of people over the years. So we're excited to bring you here today. And our guide is Terry Patterson. Hi. Hello, thanks for showing us around. Oh, my pleasure. Today, uh, Terry is our Director of Family Resources. And if, as we tour, you have a question for Terry about the Rainbow House, just put your question in the space below and we will monitor those and respond. And then maybe you've stayed at the Rainbow House or you have an experience here. Um, we would love to hear those as well. So you can put those in the comments below. So uh, we're excited to take people inside this place that most people don't get to go in. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm happy to have you guys here at mm -hmm. Rainbow House with us today. Mm -hmm. um, this is really what we refer to as a home away from home yeah. for our families that are, as you mentioned, 60 miles away uh, or farther. And it's a place where they can come, relax, and not have to worry about some of the things that they would be concerned with in the hospital. So it's a respite space for our families when they're here. Mm -hmm. and, and really explain the need for this, because we do draw regionally, and we see a lot of kids. We see a lot of kids, but you, you know, the, the thing that we have to remember is that there's a lot going on with families who have chronically ill children or medical needs. and so. The Rainbow House really provides a place where people don't have to worry about where they're going to sleep, maybe where they're going to meal, get a meal, yeah. where they can relax, where they can take their mind off of some of the things that are going on at the hospital and just kind of decompress here. So, so you know, really hospitality houses are, have a multi-function. Mm -hmm. It's not only to sleep, but it's to find community with other people who are going through the same situations that they're going through, mm -hmm. that they can share and be supported in that manner. I'm really glad you brought up that point of community because I know talking to patient families, you hear that word a lot. You know, I, I, I met someone who could understand truly what I'm going through. So as Mitch is showing people around this space, it's pretty stunning. It is. It, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, this is, this place is, it's a jaw dropper. It really is. When you, I don't think most people expect to see this type of uh, hospitality house. So we've mm -hmm. been really excited. I call it the crown jewel in, our, in my division. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but, but families really appreciate being here. A lot of detail went into uh, designing the place and, mm -hmm. and the Scott family was, was instrumental in, in a lot of the design and making it feel not only like a special place, but a home place too. Mm -hmm. And if people are thinking, oh, this place looks brand new, it's relatively new. What's kind of the, the history and background of the Rainbow House? Well, uh, Rainbow House, we moved into this building in January of 2015. Mm -hmm. um, we really had outgrown our, our facility uh, that we were using, not far from here, mm -hmm. but uh, the, the, the old facility had 32 rooms. This facility has 56 rooms. Uh, all of them have private bathrooms. Now, part of the history is that in that uh, old facility, there were some shared bathrooms kind of dorm like living. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> this is a major upgrade this is a in that major respect. Upgrade, and let's go ahead and sh head to a guest sure. room if that's okay. But uh, I do want to, I mean, I'm sure Mitch has gotten the butterflies already, but they are just beautiful, beautiful. And why butterflies? Um, Carolyn was really into gardening and butterflying. So mm -hmm. our uh, her family really wanted to make that uh, uh, a focal point when people came into the facility. Uh, so that that would be something a little piece of Carol in the making. Yeah, and I think I remember hearing this. Tell me if I'm wrong. That yellow was one of her favorite colors, mm -hmm. and so you'll see a lot of sunny yellow in the Rainbow House. All the art is done by children uh, out in the community. So we're going to go into this room, and we're just going to show you kind of what the uh, rooms look like and how they're set up. Um, all of the rooms are, like we said, private rooms. Uh, each one has at least one uh, clean bed and a sofa sleeper. We have 12 rooms that have uh, two uh, clean beds and a sofa sleeper. So for our larger families, if we need to accommodate a little larger family, we're able to do that. Mm -hmm. As we talked about, there's private bath uh, for each room. Um, really nice and spacious. Yes. Um, and you'll see this room has a tub. Uh, so that that's good for some people who want to use the tub for their, their smaller sure. children. But then we also have uh, six rooms that are uh, zero entry showers so nice. that a person uh, in a wheelchair would be able to just roll right into the shower. Mm -hmm. um, televisions, uh, we provide uh, 
cable and then Wi-Fi mm -hmm. for our uh, patient, for our guest. Sure. Um, security, there's some uh, a, a locking safe in each one of the um, closets here that where people can keep mm -hmm. some personal belongings. Uh, we'll talk about where they can keep some food items uh, along the tour. Perfect. Here. But this was a major upgrade yeah. to uh, to what we'd had, absolutely. absolutely. The private bathroom is just, you know, you can imagine sharing a bathroom. I mean, you'd make it work because it's what you have and you're grateful for it, but. Some people go back to their college better. dorm days, but right. it's, it's not something that as adults, we, we would necessarily choose to share. I mean, although it's community, mm -hmm. we, there's still strangers <laughs> in some way. That's true, that's true. So. And I want to talk about capacity, like how full is the Rainbow House typically? And we talk a lot about how we're growing because we're full at the hospital. Does that extend here? Yeah, absolutely, we're, we really reflect what the population is at the hospital. Mm -hmm. We we run at about a 85% occupancy rate. We have 56 rooms. So, you know, on any given day, we, we're running at about 45, 46 rooms. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we're at capacity, we're running at 51, 52. We try to hold a couple of rooms in reserve mm -hmm. for late night admissions. If we have a, a neonatal intensive care family that comes in, a uh, family is flown in emergently, mm -hmm. and those people are gonna need to stay, we try to make sure that we have some, some place to accommodate those right. families. And I know as we walk to a, a family space, um, your background is a certified child life specialist. Why is it important to have spaces like um, we're going to go walk to the playroom. Why is it important to have spaces that, you know, it's not just like a hotel. Like, we need places to unwind and places to meet people and gather. Why is that important? Well, first, we're, we're children's hospital. I think that's the thing to remember. And we, we want to have places where children can feel safe, comfortable, um, really uh, be able to get into the environment. So this room is, is one of our play spaces where uh, the children can come and they can feel at home and, mm -hmm. and, and be comfortable for our older kids and, and parents. We have pool tables, but in this uh, smaller area here, uh, playroom setting for the uh, younger children. From a developmental standpoint, it's very important for kids to play. They express a lot of their uh, emotional uh, state need through their play. Mm -hmm. So you, you might find the kids just having a good time, but there might be kids that struggling a little bit with what is going on with their brother or sister and that might come out through their play so mm -hmm. and then it's a stress reliever for them too we can't we can't forget that the children have stress yeah so that's that's really the importance of play uh play is the work of children so we want them to be able mm -hmm. to express their needs and concerns and continued growth um and parents need to feel comfortable that their kids are adjusting well yeah i want to make a shout out to avery who is a patient who did this art little shout out because hopefully her mom will watch this but yeah it's it's just cool that this place has that the children's fingerprints all over it and this is kind of a cool feature too what's yeah. this little barn so on this, the wall so this is um, a lending library uh, we have books in here that the uh, children and families can uh, go in and help themselves to and uh, pick a book take it to their room read it they can either bring it back or uh, we get uh, uh, we like getting book donations. Children can take it home with them if they want to. Mm -hmm. um, but if they want to bring it back and select a new book, then they're able to do that. So we have uh, one of these on each unit, uh, on each floor of the hospital, uh, of the Rainbow, Rainbow House. House. Sure. And um, so it's just, so, again, something to help the children adapt and adjust. Uh, we have movies available, um, you know, in the television. We have a, a media room uh, on the other side of this um, room that mm -hmm. uh, families again can gather to watch mm -hmm. uh, movies or uh, ball games you know being sure. in Nebraska uh, Cornhusker <laughs> football games are a good time to gather as a group mm -hmm. and, and watch games on Saturday and one thing I think people can be surprised to learn about when you have a hospitalized child and with this the degree of acuity a degree of sickness um, that we see people are probably here a long time sometimes I mean, months. Is that is that the case? We've we've had we've actually had people who've been here for a year plus. Wow. The, the average length of stay is five to six nights. Mm -hmm. um, but again, 
long period of time away from home. Mm -hmm. Two to three months is not uncommon for families to, to be away from home. So again, that's why we wanted to feel like a home environment for them. And that leads us to this amazing dining Just space. Just come into our dining space and kitchen area where uh, families can really make themselves comfortable in the environment, uh, cooking their own meals, uh, dining together as a family or in group settings as they make uh, friends with one another. Um, again, we just want it to be a space where they feel comfortable. Um, plenty of seating, plenty of lighting. Um, if you're able to see outside, we have some play space out there. So when the weather's nice, Someday. it's, it's a little on. windy out. It's a little windy out today, <laughs> Hold but uh, they're, they're able to go outside and uh, make those spaces available mm -hmm. uh, to themselves to, to play or just relax. So soon we'll be able to open that area up again. The really exciting portion is the kitchen over here. Um, it's beautiful. In a um, hospitality house setting, one of the tenets of, of a hospitality house is that most of us, our food expense is really what causes us some angst at mm -hmm. times. So a lot of times if you can make your own meals and prepare them, you can certainly save money in those ways. So uh, we have four uh, oven stove combinations where uh, people can make uh, meals for themselves. If they have special dietary needs, they can tend to their own dietary needs. Uh, we have all the utensils they need, bowls and, and uh, mixing bowls, uh, utensils, pots and pans, uh, pot holders. Uh, you name Everything. it, we've got it. You can yeah. come in here and find it, cookie sheets, if they just want to bake cookies. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, you, so it's fully stocked kitchen. Um, a couple of dishwashers that we have. The staff takes care of some of those bigger items, but uh, then we have community uh, refrigerators right. where uh, the people are free to help themselves to any of the items that we have in those. You know, this is also the site where we get so much support from volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe people watching are like, wow, this is an amazing place, how can I help? How can they do that? Um, particularly at mealtimes? It's, it's, it's great that you asked that question. Uh, we had 200 different donations for meals last year. So people coming into, into the facility who want to know, how can I uh, support the hospital or the work that you do? Mm -hmm. uh, bringing a meal to our families is, is a great thing. So we asked mm -hmm. them to maybe prepare a meal for about 35 to 40 people. Uh, they can either prepare it and bring it or they can cook it here, you know, and there's nothing like smelling uh, homemade uh, items or things being cooked. It's, it's just an excellent opportunity mm -hmm. for families to uh, yeah. feel, again, get that home environment. That homey feel. Well, let's head back here because there's okay. something We're behind these doors there. that's definitely notable okay. as well. Okay. I'll meet you. We're going to go into uh, our, our private pantry area. So the, one of the nice features of Rainbow House is that not only do we have the public uh, spaces where people can share and put food and store food, but we have private pantries here so that a family can have a space to put food that they've purchased. Uh, so each of the pantries for each room has a uh, refrigerator, small refrigerator, and then places to store food. So this might be important for uh, medications. People don't have to worry about medication that they need to store oh, yeah. and keep cold they can keep that privately and then keep it keep some security to it each um, they can keep the things that they've purchased mm -hmm. for themselves there but then each door has a combination lock so the family set that and so they're the only ones that can get into these spaces mm -hmm. then we encourage people a lot of times in the in the public spaces of the, the shared space you might find where a family maybe they bought a gallon of milk they didn't use the, the gallon so they another family is welcome to, to use those things um, Sarah you had asked earlier too about places where the community can help support yeah. Rainbow House we have a, a pantry where we have items that families can choose items canned goods uh, kind of a wish list yes yeah, so we have we do have a wish list on our website so um, that helps families to it so they don't have to go out and purchase some items in the uh, that would be on the pantry list so they can help themselves to that I can show you that over here if uh, uh, we have microwaves and things along the but these are, uh, are just items that anyone can help themselves to so some some dried goods and uh, canned soups yeah. um, 
So again, it helps people who might have some limited uh, resources financially right. to kind of help get them over the hump. Yeah, that's such a good point because if you have a sick child for a long time, I mean, that is financially can be really tough. Ab absolutely. So, absolutely. And so. then I know, you know, we care for the, the littlest ones too. We've got some special freezers for the breast milk. Yeah, breast milk freezers. We got it covered. And uh, so everything is, is taken care of. I think we try to think of everything here at, at, at Rainbow yeah. House. We had a lot of feedback from our uh, families that had stayed here in the past right. that, that said, hey, what what is it that we're missing? What do you need when you're away from home? Mm -hmm. So these are some of the items that uh, the breast milk freezers were certainly uh, a result of talking with our families. So we will head up that, yeah, and head up this grand staircase that's just such a focal point. Um, but I know they got some important stuff down here, got too. Some, uh, Laundry, so the families are able to do laundry down at the end of the hall. Mm -hmm. We also have a fitness center, because so, sometimes you just need to work off a little bit of that stress. So, right. yes. so we have a, a, a couple of treadmills and a, a uh, bicycle in there. Mm -hmm. Nice. And um, again, we're going to for those who are just tuning in, this is the Carolyn Scott Rainbow House. So we've got this piece of art up here. Terry, what can you tell us about this? It's pretty, uh, pretty stunning. Uh, you know, the family commissioned this. This is a picture of Carolyn holding her Hi. first grandchild. And from what I understand, it's uh, her only grandchild oh, that she was okay. uh, able to meet. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, this really is Carolyn holding a baby. What what better it's beautiful. Um, sentiment for Rainbow House? This is, this is what the Rainbow House is about. It's about us being able to care for the babies and, and families mm -hmm. being able to care for their children. In a home, in a home environment. So, mm -hmm. um, so this piece of art just kind of reminds people when they come in, um, really what the house is about, and it's it's loving the babies. Yeah, loving the children, and we are so fortunate for community support. Um, you know that really makes services like the Rainbow House happen. You know what? Absolutely. What would you say to our community for all the ways that they step up and help make? Just spaces like this and services like this possible. You know, there's a lot of things in hospitals that we wouldn't be able to do yeah. on our own. Mm -hmm. And I think we're fortunate here in Omaha that we live in such a generous community. Mm -hmm. So well, the many of the donations, uh, the books that we get that are in, in another so another one of our book stations, the toys and the games, uh, those are donated by our by our community. Mm -hmm. uh, so that helps us. You know, I see a couple of games sitting out on a table where kids can come and, and, and they don't have to be isolated and away from their friends and feel like I'm missing out on something. Right. I mean, all of us miss home, but we, we're trying to create a space where people feel comfortable in doing those things. So the community bringing us food or bringing the families food or, or donating items that we can utilize here, that really helps support the work that we do at the hospital and extends here to to mm -hmm. Rainbow House too. And I know we've got some comments um, while we've been live that they're just, you know, people with gratitude. What is the feedback from families? You know, not only when they when they walk in, you know, they didn't anticipate for their child to be in the hospital. They didn't anticipate needing a place like this. And then when you can say, here, stay here. We, we're here to help. What's the feedback that you receive on this place? You know, this this is a place that creates one of those wow moments. The you, you come through the door, and maybe you saw it on the video as you were watching us. Um, wow, what a beautiful place! Uh, so that's that's a lot of what we hear. But then a lot of people say, you know, I didn't expect something this nice, mm -hmm. um, something this comfortable, a place this comfortable to be able to stay in while we were at the hospital. So uh, we hear we hear comments like that. We hear comments that's complimentary to the community when they say, you know, people donate the food and they bring it in and, oh, I, I, I didn't know if I was going to be able to make a meal or I wasn't going to have time to make a meal tonight. And I come back and there's there's a meal waiting for me. Yeah. Um, the, the, um, the, the people that come by to just drop things off to, to bring um, joy to the kids. We've had carnivals in the the play spaces and yeah. things like that. Jugglers, uh, uh, magicians come to entertain the families while we're here mm -hmm. around the holidays, the different holidays. We're able, the community is able to help us do things. And the families are just like, you know, we really didn't expect that. We, we just thought we were going to be someplace sleeping. Yeah, just a room. Just a room. It's so much more than that. And so we've been really glad to take you inside. Again, a place that 
some people don't know exist, but we're just a few blocks away from the hospital and we're just, it's just such a special place. So thank you, Terry, for sharing your time and your expertise. Um, thank you to all of the families um, who stay here and, and, and trust us with their children and uh, a community treasure. Um, as well as on Facebook, of course, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and you can always find us online at childrensomaha.org.